Welcome back to the O Hockey Show, and today I am talking about the Boston Bruins in today's NHL trade deadline video. Now, I've talked about the Ducks, and I've talked about the Coyotes, two bottom of the league teams, 30th and 39th, and 29th. Absolutely dreadful teams, right? Well, we're taking a drastic U-turn going straight to the top. First place overall with 39-8-5 record, the Boston Bruins. Now, the Bruins are incredible. They're phenomenal. Their system is... I This team is the epitome of just a good team. Uh, this is... Everything is right about this team, right? But everything can be expanded upon and made better. Nothing is perfect, and this team is not perfect. Now... They are incredible, but I think they could be helped out a little bit more. So right now, the big news for the Boston Bruins is Jacob Chikrin, I think, is being mostly related to the Bruins. And I think this would be a huge move for the Boston Bruins and for the Coyotes as well. For one, Chikrin, he's got a good contract, super player. He he had the most goals out of any uh, defenseman in the bubble year. So he's a goal scorer as a defenseman. He's also strong defensively. He's got three years left, including this one, at a 4.6 cap hit. The Boston Bruins already have Lindholm, McAvoy, and Grishelik. I think the, those three are great, but the, after that, it kind of falls off. They could have that one more defenseman, who's also going to stay around a while for a good cap hit. And the Coyotes are looking for certain things. I think the Bruins could definitely cough up with how good they are and not really worry about it too much. Well, for now. But Chikrin to make this team's defense just that much, just so much more spectacular. They're already great. Lindholm's great. McAvoy's great. Grish looks great. Add Chikrin, and you have three lines or two super lines of defensemen that no one's going to be scoring against and is going to generate offense as well. They're not only not going to score, but you've also got Lindholm and Chikrin. you got a, two guys that can make offense happen for your team. So that would be huge for the Bruins. And not just that. People talk about Chikrin, but they could even look elsewhere for a pot, uh, potential defenseman, including with the Coyotes still. guy like Shane Goshespierre as well. Maybe you do a two-for-two two tandem, right? Maybe you bring Chikrin and Goshespierre. And bring in a goal-scoring defenseman. More than one. You got three, at least five super good defensemen back there. So I think that'd be a huge move. And obviously, that's a, that's not saying much, is it? Obviously, that'd be a huge move. But it would be super for a team like the Bruins that already have that op offensively up-front play. They already have a super good goaltending tandem. Not just one guy, because they already got Olmark. But then they also have Swayman in the back. So they have two good def uh, goaltenders. And make that four super defensemen. I mean, this team going into the playoffs where all of this stuff really matters, where it's not just defense wins you stuff, offense wins you stuff. It's a combination of both. And this team, they have the offense, and I think they could use some more, but we'll get there. But starting with the defense, they're already good defensively. They can add a little bit more. And one thing that adds that is that this team is a plus 80 in goal differential, which is like, that is basically double than what second place is, which is a plus 42. This team is so good at scoring and not letting the other team score either. And, just oh, like, that is the epitome of what a good team is, right? You score more than your opponents, duh. That's a good thing. But this team does it so much better than even the second place team that does it. So the Bruins are super good, but they need some more offense, I think. I mean, their guys have good numbers. The second line are all 30s. I mean, you've got some good hitters, right? Well, in the bottom six, I think it really falls off. And I think a team like the Bruins here, they already went to the Stanley Cup Final a few years ago, and I think they failed then when they had a super team, a solid team then. I think they need to go overkill now because this might be the last year they do get a run at this type of stuff with Bergeron pro near the end of his career, Krejci near the end, Marchand, you know, I mean, he seems to only get better with age. But... It's a lot of these factors coming into play here. You never know when this team's going to finally just drop out from the bottom. Well, I guess from the top. So let's talk about uh, uh, offensively, right? So the bottom six, including maybe you want to upgrade the second line. Here, I got some ideas here. So for the bottom six, we got Ivan Barbashev. Now, 24 points, 9 goals, 15 assists isn't su anything super incredible, right? From the Blues, but he, he's a he's a... He's a solid Russian centerman, right? You set him in that fourth line centerman role or third line. And, well, Charlie Coyle's already there for the third line. So, or, so I, I don't know. Actually, he's second. Whatever. 
I think they would really benefit from a guy like an Ivan Barbashev. Just throw him in, maybe like a second-round pick to the Blues, and maybe, just maybe, Ryan O'Reilly from the Blues as well. These two guys were both on the team that beat them from that Stanley Cup run. So no, it's not only would this, I think, be an interesting move, but there's also a story there that might promote these guys that go out there. Ryan O'Reilly, yes, he's having a super tough year, right? Not good at all. 11 goals, 17 points, not good at all. I wouldn't go out, or, but... What if they could just – this is the end of his contract, right? What if they just throw him a bone, right? Like, Blues, listen, we'll give you a second-round pick for, like, a Barbashev. But what if we just do a first and get both of them? They throw out that bone. Maybe the Blues go, we are not. We don't really want O'Reilly anyways. Barbashev's kind of not doing much for us, and we're already going to finally – we're going to start failing. I guess we don't really need them. Sure. One first round pick, you get those two guys. Would that not be huge at making not Ryan O'Reilly goes to this team after having such a bad year to a, a prospering team and he wants to go out there and show up for him. And he was good in the playoffs last year. He's been a good playoff performer. He was the Con Smythe winner. So I think this would be a big interesting just just th the Bruins are good overall already, right? Why not go out on a limb and potentially go for that guy that's going to make it, not make or break, but just go give him an opportunity. Throw him a bone. Get, throw him out there and just be like, Ryan, you're a veteran. Play for that contract that you've got. Play big in the playoffs, and maybe you'll earn, redeem yourself from this terrible season. And the Bruins are such a good team that they can afford that. So, oh, and especially if they throw him on, like, the third line or something, maybe not even the second line, but they throw him on the third line. Who, I I would want Ryan O'Reilly in my third line of my team, even though he's having a terrible year. Third line, Ryan O'Reilly, why not? Just give him a chance. So I think that'd be an interesting move by them. And then Team O'Meyer, and I think he's he's been linked to a lot of teams. The Rangers were one, but I think that's kind of out because of Tarasenko now. I think the Golden Knights, the Devils, and I think the Bruins were one of them as well. And I think, I mean, any team would be, it would be a huge grab for them to uh, get Team O'Meyer. But the Bruins, if they really wanted to go overkill, the Saint, the Sharks really need some draft picks up and stuff uh, to grow the team for the future. Meyer's probably going to – they're not going to keep him around. I just don't know if the Bruins could afford him, you know? Like, I mean, any team – if anyone just says, like, that would be huge for the Bruins to get this guy, right? That's not saying anything. For the Bruins, I just don't know how they could pull it off because if they could get him – at the same time, I don't really know if they would need him. Like they, I mean, of course they would benefit from having Timo Meyer, I think. But I think at the same time, it could hurt them with the whole Florida and Giroux situation last season, where they bring him in and it kind of ruined the system. I think they went over, they overkilled, and I think in this situation, Meyer wouldn't want to be a third line guy. He would want to be a top guy on the team. And I just don't think there's really a spot for them. And maybe they do squeeze them in, and then it kind of ruins what they've got going on and pushes someone down the lineup. But I don't know. I think they it would be big for them to add, and it would pro it would definitely help the team. But I don't know if they could pull it off for one and for two. I just don't know what they would have to give up for it either. So it would be kind of tough for happen. And then I got Larkin and Bertuzzi slash Bertuzzi, right? So. Bertuzzi not having a good season at all. 21 games, I think, and then 8 points, 2 goals, and 6 assists, maybe, I think. Not good, right? But both of these guys are on the end of their contract, and there seems to be no talks between their teams. Larkin, going to an original 6 team like he is already on Detroit, going to the Bruins. What if they bring him in, he loves it, and maybe he takes a nice, friendly contract for the team, and with the cap growing as, as well... Maybe it's a match made in heaven. You add that second-line centerman onto this team, I think that'd be a huge move for the Bruins. And I know that's not saying much, but I think that'd work perfectly. He's fast, and I think the Bruins need something like that. I think the Bruins need to inject some of that in adrenaline into the lineup and boost those guys. I mean, could you imagine Hall and Larkin on the same line? They'd be speeding down the ice, and wouldn't be able to catch them, and they'd score. He, that would be big for that for the Bruins, and yeah. So Max Domi for the bottom six, and I don't think a lot of people are talking about him, but he's got 14 goals, 21 points on the miserable Chicago Blackhawks this season. Max Domi, I think, would be a pick, perfect pick as well. He's a, he's a hard-nosed guy, rough and tough, gritty player, 
and the Bruins, they're the Beantown uh, bullies, right? That, that's not what they're called. <laughs> that, 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 was, that was the Flyers, the Broad Street. But anyways, we know the Bruins are a tough team, right? That's what they've been usually known as. Max Domi being in that agitator, throw him in there. I think that'd be a perfect match as well. As a maybe, I just threw this guy in, Nick Ritchie from the Coyotes. 21 points. He played for the Bruins before. Maybe they bring him in just to bolster and buckle down that bottom six. Because guys like A.J. Greer, not a very good guy on the team. Bring these guys in. Bring in like a Barbashev and a Ritchie or a Domi. Bring in two of those guys for that bottom six and solidify that. I mean, that'd be perfect. Barbashev, power forward, Domi, uh, agitator. Throw them in there. You got a hard line to play against in the playoffs, and that's what the Bruins are building for. And that's really all I have to say. I think the Bruins bet. I think the best bet on this board would probably to be one of the bottom six guys. I don't Ryan O'Reilly. I think would be an interesting move that people would really talk smack about, and then he would turn out to be in not amazing, but say he gets like another. Let's say he gets 15 points in the last 20 games of the season or something. I think that'd be an interesting move. But that is all I have. And if he plays in the playoffs, I mean, he could be a huge guy, huge uh, game changer for the playoffs. But that is all I have to say about the Boston Bruins and their upcoming trade deadline assignment. So that is all I have to say. So make sure you go down below if you somehow like this video and pick up your free subscription down below by hitting that red subscribe button. If you like this video, leave a like. Not a dislike, but go down to the comment section below and tell me how stupid I am. Tell me how stupid am I for thinking anything I just said. Until, until next time, thank you for watching this. I hope you're having an amazing day. Too sweet and ta-ta for now.